Happy New Year. You know, when we say Happy New Year, it's, it's a wish, it's a blessing upon your life. But there's a way to guarantee that you have a Happy New Year. And how you do that is do it God's way. You know, one of the, one of the, the like downfalls of doing it our way, um, the Bible says that the wage of sin is death. Sin just means this, is doing it wrong. That's what it means, not doing it God's way. But the wage of sin is this. All it means is this, that what I get from a sin is a temporary good time, but at the end, it brings death. Like it's not free. You get something, right? Um, and that word death, part of it means misery. And right now as a society, I think we're just more miserable than ever. We're not happy. We have no joy. We're depressed. We're full of anxiety. We're angry. We're divided. And it's just a result of doing it our way. And if today you're saying, man, I got some emotional stuff going. This is what Jesus said this. He goes, I've written these things. And that's the Bible. I've written this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. I want you to know that God wants you emotionally whole. He wants you to have eternal life. He wants you to be free. But it's finally making a decision. I'm tired of doing it my way. I'm going to start doing it his way. Is there anybody this year saying, I'm ready to surrender my will to God, right? You, you've heard the Lord's Prayer, and the Lord's Prayer says, it says this, thy kingdom come, our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, and it says real quick, thy will be done. So it goes right there. He goes, here's the key. You want the kingdom? You know what that means, kingdom? Heaven. You want heaven on earth? Come on, you want some joy? In heaven, there's nobody depressed. There's no one bound. There's no one addicted. There's no one depressed. There's no one angry. Heaven on earth. How, how does that happen? Start doing God's will on earth. How many want to start seeing God's will? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. They're tied together. We are so glad you're here on the first Sunday of the year. Give yourselves a hand if you're tuning in because you had a long night last night. We're so glad you're here too. Uh, I, what I want to, um, um, we're going to go, I'm going gonna, gonna to pray right now. Just have you have a seat and we're going to go over the book that we're, that, that's, it's going to be out there that I really want to make sure that as a church, you understand it. And um, you, you really work that, let that work book change your life forever. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that we have together. And we dedicate this first Sunday to you. And this is what we're doing. We're seeking you first in 2023. And you promised us if we put you first and we seek you first, you'd add everything to us. Today we're going to learn a lot about your word and we're not just going to hear, we're not just here to learn, but we're here to learn and apply and then eventually teach it to somebody else. That's what it's all about, Father. We just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, I think I'm in the middle. Okay, great. Right in the middle, Pastor. All right. <laughs> if, um, if, if you've not gotten your book, this book that's, that's right before you, the Daily Growth Book, it was probably... It's, it's a miracle book we probably wrote in three weeks. But it, what it's going to do, if you haven't got it yet, what it's going to do is we're going to go through ten books of the Bible it, there, that's in here. But it's also a great tool to train others. So we're going to kind of just go over what's in the book. And this is going to be a great book for you to have in your family. Study it together. If you're saying, what do we do to become more spiritual? This is... This is how you become more spiritual. You are a byproduct of what you consume. And we got a lot of things that we're consuming and input determines output. That means if we don't start putting different things in, nothing, nothing good's gonna come out if we're not putting nothing good in. So this is, and that's gonna be intentional. I don't know how many here are, have decided that, hey, I'm going to start exercising. I'm going to start losing weight. I mean, they, right now, all over the TV, they got every diet you could imagine. Because every, at the beginning of the year, we're saying, man, I'm, things are going to change in 2023. But one of the ways that you change your life is making sure that you make a decision and you start doing things differently. How many understand you got to change your habits to change your life, right? 
So, but these are decisions that you make. And your greatest enemy, my greatest enemy, is my present thinking and my present habits. We don't like to change. Um, I'm, I'm right now beginning to exercise, and I, I, I start and stop, start and stop. And I'm trying to figure out something that works for me. I, I got a bike um, probably uh, well, a, a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't soon. It was a year ago. And then I started riding that bike. And it was, and it's, it, people say I cheat because it's an electric bike. <laughs> but I'm still moving my legs. <laughs> uh, the first time I, I, I rode that electric bike, it was so cool because I was at Calci San Bernardino over there. And no one knows it's electric, but it doesn't look electric. And I saw these real serious bikers, and they're riding their bike with all their uniforms and their real tight shorts and their, their little helmets. And they're a team, like a biking team. And then I'm in my sandals and my shorts, <laughs> but I have an electric bike. And I go, oh, let me catch up to these guys. Put it in shame. And I just rode by them. They're like, what's going on here? He should join our bike team. They didn't know, they didn't know it was electric. Well, anyways, I started tr trying that thing out, but and then it got real cold, and then I stopped doing that. And, but, but change is, is, is difficult because um, deciding to change and sticking with change is a whole other thing. But, I, but I'm so glad you're here today. But coming to the first service, but coming to 52, 51 more services is a whole other thing. But I'll tell you this. It's in your consistency is where you start seeing your change. There's no growth when there's no consistency. Are you ready to get consistent in your life? So we're going to give you some tools to do that. So let's go over the book real fast, just um, a few pages, and so you can get an idea what's in it. Well, one of the first things you'll see when you jump into the book is something called 18 Growth Habits. And now, again, Pastor is telling us this book helps you. If you follow this book, you're going to be successful in every, every area of your life. And he's not joking. When I first... When I first heard this book was coming out, again, I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be, like, you know, a little book I can kind of keep in you know, my back. This is like, I saw this, and I thought, okay, this is gold right here. What I have in my hands right now, this is going to set me, this is going to be my best friend all year, first of all. I know I'm going to grow. If I apply this, I'm going to be a different person by the end of the year. Who you see now is going to be different. What I love about the 18 growth habits, Pastor, is that it's not just... You know, pray, read your Bible, super important. Obviously, we need that. But you know what else is in there? Um, set big goals. Set big goals for a year. You know what else is in there? Um, attend church. You know what else is in there? Eat healthy and, regu and exercise regularly. All right, we need that. I need that, Pastor, in my life. What else is in there? Um, budget, give, save, invest. These are things we know. Okay, we know this. We know we need to walk in these things. We know, okay, I know I need to budget better. I know I need to eat better. I know I need to exercise regularly. I know I need to forgive some people that I've been holding on to grudges against. I know I need to be honest. I need to be grateful. These are all in this book. And if we apply these 18 growth habits, um, I know this for a fact. I'm coming out a stronger, more equipped um, healthier on the inside spiritually and on the outside. I'm going to be more equipped to do ministry, to lead my family. I'm coming out a stronger and a better person. If I apply these, I am a different person in Jesus' name. So, so It's, it's going to so be excited. a great tool also to train your family. I would recommend that if you want your kids to change, your young adults in your home to change, or maybe the family dynamics, this is what's going to have to happen. You're going to have to have the word of God in your home. We got YouTube in your home. You got Instagram in your home. You got Netflix in your home. But when was the last time we had Jesus' word being taught in your home? That's going to have to be intentional. So um, this is a great training manual to teach our children, our youth, our young adults, our family members how to think. This book right here is written in a way that if you practice everything that's in it, it's going to make you a leader. It's going to make you successful in everything that you do. So let's go to the second page there. Okay. So, yeah, this, this book is not just uh, 
you're reading. There's actually links in here that are going to link you to tools. There's a whole page on Bible study tools, a whole page on the prayer guide, which gives you just some credible ways to pray. This is just something that we've broken down from pastors, 12, 12 ways to pray that can get through an hour. And then we have prayer guide tools. It's just awesome, Pastor. You, all you do is pop your phone out. You can scan these QR codes and go. Now get this. While we're talking about QR codes, if you look at the book of Mark, every book that we're studying, we're going through 10 books of the Bible, there's going to be a link to a overview of that book, a really cool, uh, engaging video from the Bible Project. If you haven't seen those, check them out. This is going to be awesome. It's going to give you a great insight into what you're studying even before you start to read. And then, of course, this is awesome. Weekly overviews where you're going to spend time with your family and individually really looking at your goals for the week, looking at the prayer requests that you have for the week, and a verse that you're going to really meditate on that week. I think that's going to be a life-changing experience for every single person that does that. I know for me personally, one of the things I, I think about is, am I being as effective as I want to be? Well, this is how you, you measure that. You put your goals down, you pray about those goals before you write them, and then you actually can measure your success for the week. And, of course, we haven't even jumped into the daily layout yet, Pastor, which is awesome. This is something that will literally make it, I mean, whether you're a brand new believer or you've been walking with God for 40 years, this book will change your life. So also here we have a word of the year. And what we want you to do is, is hear God, spend some time and say, what is my word for the year? And then you'll write here word for the year and then the verse that's attached to that word. And then a dictionary definition of your word. So we want you to think about the year. If you're going to be successful, you're going to have to be intentional about being successful. How many get that? Right. It's not going to be an accident. It's, it's, it's what your decisions you're making, thoughts that you're putting in. And then it has my top 10 goals for this year. Write down 10 things that this is my. Now, I'll tell you this. If you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. The year is going to pass you right by and you're not going to get anywhere. And that means you could repeat the same year, year after year after year, and say life's boring. Life's boring because you've not chosen to do anything. Wow. So it's very important to get vision from God and say, God, what is it that you want to accomplish in my life this year? And then write it down. If you do not write down your goals, you've not received it. It's kind of like how can you build a house without a blueprint? I know you, I want a beautiful house. I got a property. I want a beautiful house. You can't tell the, the c contractor beautiful house. He's going to say, give me the blueprints. And this is the idea. Until you write down your goals, you haven't really received it. The first step of taking something out of the invisible into the visible is writing it down. How many wow. understand that? Amen. So you're going to get an opportunity to do that. And then it also has what I'm praying for this year, your growth track for the year. All right, we have a growth track on the church. You can check where you're at. And then your daily, and we'll, do it, we'll end it with this, the day. Oh, let's go over the weekly weekly reviews. So yeah. every week, not only are you gonna send, you're going to send yearly goals, but you're going to set weekly goals. You're going to have three prayer requests that you're focusing on this week. And then you're going to go by, and then you're going to write down what was your greatest accomplishment last week. So you're going to be thinking about that. And then every day, we're going to have a step-by-step -step process. And I want Christian to go over the step-by-step -step process of what a daily devotional looks like. Yeah, so what's cool about this book, that's, there's actual Bible in here. <laughs> there's 10 right. books of the Bible verse by verse written out in here. So you can use this book as your daily devotion. This is what we're going to do. When we start our day, um, a big question is, how, Pastor, how do you do your devotion? Like how, how do you get into the word? Well, this is how. These are the six steps that Pastor Marco has learned is uh, the most effective way we can study the word and get into it. So on, one, on the first day, January 1st, we're in Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. We read through the scriptures, and what I've done is just got a highlighter, and I highlight key words that, that really stick out to me. And I underline, I can write in the margins things that stick out. Um, I'm sorry, let's start with step number one. Step number one, pray. Pray for understanding. You know, we're not going to get anything out of scripture without the Holy Spirit speaking to us. So why don't we ask the Holy Spirit to help us and get something out of scripture. And I want you to understand, you do not grow spiritually by reading. You, get, you grow spiritually by getting understanding. That means this book is not, to, the Bible is not to inform you. The Bible is meant to transform you. Right. So how you get transformation is you ask for revelation. That means so I'm reading, I go, God, give me insight that I'll see a principle that you would speak to me. Uh, and, and all of a sudden, some pops out like, whoa. 
That just blew my mind. You know what happened? It changed my mind. I need to make an adjustment here. No, pues no wonder. Right? You're kind of looking at it like, and every time you go into scripture and you start getting revelation, you start getting wisdom, and you start getting insights in your life, you're going to start realizing the Bible is gold. It's gold. And, it, and the biggest problem we have is thinking problems. And the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your what? Mind. Until your mind transformed, your marriage is not transformed, your family is not transformed, your business is not transformed, your future is not transformed. So this is the only way to transform your mind. There's a lot of junk input. It's time to get God's input. Start adjusting our thinking to think like him. And if you think like him, you're going to start winning like him. You're going to start having peace like him. You're going to start having joy like him. Come on. We want to become more like him and less like us, right? So you want to say, something, Mike? You're yeah. Well, uh, just another exciting part about this to me is there's actually over a hundred videos attached to this book, and I mentioned already the the book overviews. But Pastor Marco is going to give us insights on every chapter that we study together. So every week yeah. there's going to be a video from Pastor. This first three weeks of the year is special because we actually have daily overviews, daily insights from leaders around our church that are going to be helping us go through this. So you're going to learn how to kind of dive into those scriptures. Some of the Bible study tools that are mentioned, we're going to utilize those to really help you start to dig into the scripture and get that revelation that pastor's talking about. Well, let's, um, you know, I don't think we could go through the six right now, but, <laughs> but, but, but uh, what, what I want you to do is I'm going to talk to the men right now, fathers. Uh, th there's no way around this. If you're a father, you have a big responsibility. God did not give you a family to just hang out with. He gave you a family to lead. And, 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 you, and, and I know, like a lot of us guys, that maybe you didn't have a, a real strong role model of a father. Some of us had, had fathers. Some of us, our father was gone. You know, my, my father died in a gunfight when I was six, five or six years old. You know, um, so I didn't have that great of a, a, a godly examples as a father, but, but God taught me through his word how to be a father, how to be a husband, how to be a leader, but I did take on that responsibility. And, and this is what you got to do is you got to commit to taking some time to study the Bible with your family. And what I want you to do, guys, if you're saying I'm willing to take, the, take on that, that role, you could use this book. And all you have to do is just one day a week, find out when you're going to do it, get your family together, and just go through the steps. That's it. Go through the scripture. Go through the steps that are in here. Go over it. Talk to your kids. They might be real quiet at the beginning. I don't want to do that. That's all right. Don't let them discourage you. You're the leader. Come on. Transform their lives. Say, I know you don't feel like it right now, but I'm going to help you be successful. I'm going to help you overcome. I'm going to, come on, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you be happy. I'm going to help you serve God. I'm going to help you get to heaven. Come on, I'm going to develop, we're going to develop some good habits. I'm telling you, this book will coach you right through. You don't need to know how to do it. Just follow the book. It will coach your family how to think. And, and so commit to that. We have um, thewayconnect.com. If you're saying, I want to officially I, this is what I want. I want to make my family a discipleship making family, and I'm committing to one day a week for a half hour, or whatever, to spend a time in Bible study. This is the time I'll do Saturday mornings. I'm going to do that and just sign up your family. Single moms, I'm talking to you now. Sign up your family on Thursday. We're going to have a Zoom meeting to show you how to run a meeting. So if you sign up, you're going to be signing up for the Zoom meeting. So make sure you do that. Sign up your home. Wouldn't it be great for us to have 5,000 homes that are actually doing Bible studies and going through this book? So you want to get your book right after service. Don't miss it. This is what I would do. Everybody in my house has to have one. There's no doubt about it because we're going to be going through this book all year long and everybody's going to be growing in my house. How about your house? Make a decision. All right, you guys ready? Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Let me have the pulpit, so I'm going to go ahead and then pulp it. I don't even know what that, that sounds kind of weird. Sounds like, what is the stand? I don't know what it is. All right. You guys ready for the word? Um, one of the things last night that I, I mean, last night, if you weren't here, how many were here for the New Year's celebration? Okay, so it's probably around 50% of us. And, and I, but, I, but there's something that's really important. I wanted to go over the word of the year, and then we're going to, Everything that I'm going to be covering today will make 100% sense. But 
seeking the word of the year was something I was praying about and it kind of switched out a few times. And I remember last week, I told my staff, I got the word and everybody was preparing, they had videos for this word. And then the night before, I mean, yesterday, I wake up in the morning and God says, that's not the word. So I got the word and, and the word it was a word that we use. It's in this book and it's in the front of the book and it's growth. But, but when I woke up in the morning, I go, oh man, now I have to come up with a teaching on, on the word growth. And, but when I, when I got up, God just started speaking to me. And I had my pen and paper and God started speaking to me in first person. And, and, and as he was speaking to me in first person, telling me this is what I'm doing, um, I started kind of switching it into like more general. And I was, he would say, I am, my favor's on, on you. And I would say, God's favor's on us. So I kept switching it. And, and, and by, the, I, by, the way, by the time I was halfway done, I started writing it the way I was hearing it. And then he goes, this is how I want you to present it to the church. This is not a general statement. I am prophetically speaking to the church, and they need to know I'm speaking to them so they can receive this word from me because it's, it's this. Thus saith the Lord. God, I'm saying this. So I want to read to you what God told me yesterday morning. It says, this year will be a year of supernatural growth because of the favor that I have placed over your life. Areas that have been barren and unfruitful will begin to produce and create a mighty harvest. Do not be afraid of dreaming big because I am a God that has no limits. Remember that all things are possible for those who believe. I have promised you that I will give you infinitely more than you can ask, think, according to my power that is at work within you. The growth will come with specific instructions. If you follow the step-by-step -step instructions, that I will give you, you will see a release of my favor that will cause mega growth. Get ready to do more this year than you've done your whole life. I'm gonna say it again. Get ready to do more this year than you've done your whole life. Come on, is anybody receiving that? This year. Just like Joseph went from the prison to the palace, I'm doing the same for you this year. I will take you out of obscurity and make you known for my glory. Areas that you have been, that areas that have, have given you, you've given your best and not seen the results that you have expected will finally blossom. The vision will surely come to pass because my word never returns void. It always accomplishes what I set it out to do. Say yes to my will and see my hand of blessing and favor cause you to grow, succeed, and prosper in all you do. The seeds that you've planted will produce the abundant harvest that I promise you. Humble yourselves before me. Turn from your sinful ways so that you can experience a river of my love, peace, and abundance flowing into your hearts, minds, and lives. Seek me early in the morning and you will find me. I have been waiting to meet with you so I can speak to you. I will reveal myself, my plans, and vision for your life. I will show you what is to come and prepare you and your family for the victory in the battle and the supernatural, and super, and the supernatural growth that I promise you this day. The harvest is truly ripe. And I'm sending you as my laborers into my fields to bring in my harvest. As you allow my word to direct your paths, dwell in your hearts, and be proclaimed out of your mouth, you will reap a great harvest that will begin in your own homes. The promise of salvation is for you and your entire family. Set time aside daily to meet with me, to study my word, and pray so that I can spiritually spiritually develop and mature you to receive everything that I've promised you. If you delight in me, I will give you the desires of your heart. The supernatural growth will begin in you and overflow from you to those around you. If you make your home a place where my presence is welcome, I will invade it with my glory and power. Praise and worship and the teachings of my word in your homes will create an atmosphere where my spirit will touch the hearts of your loved ones and produce a harvest of salvation, deliverance, and supernatural growth in their lives. Thus saith the Lord.
How many received that word from God today? You know, last year wasn't a great year. It was a year of growth. But this year is going to be a year, a year of supernatural growth. Last year, we launched a church in Arizona and purchased a brand new campus. We launched our church in La, La Puente. We built an elementary school for our orphans in Kenya. We started building a junior high for our orphans and the poorest children in Kenya that can't afford to go to school. This year, or last year, actually, we opened a women's home in Kenya to help prostitutes get off the streets. This year, we grew in attendance, church attendance, by 43,969 people for a total of 244,000 people came through these doors. Kids World grew in attendance by 9,854 children for a total of 43,154 children came through our doors in our kids' ministry. Last year, 4,154 graduated from our Holy Warriors classes. 6,749 souls were saved last year in our church services. We opened the PAC Center Job Staffing Agency. I want you to get this. Our church is going to be the number one, um, number one uh, business hiring people in the whole city and maybe the whole county. This year, we have become an official Toys for Tots distribution center. And last year, we gave as a church to minister to the needs of our community, church and world outreaches, $7 million. Come on, give the Lord a hand. That was last year. But this year is going to be a year of supernatural growth. Is there anybody receiving that for your personal life, for your family? Come on. Souls are going to be saved. The power of God's going to flow. Things that you've been working on for years, God is saying, it's not a waste of time. You've not labored in vain. You're going to see, the, you're going to see my word come to pass. Is there anybody ready for that? So now this is what we're doing this year. We're completing our playground and refurbishment of our Arrowhead campus. I don't believe we're going to get that done. The playground is going to be done, focused, it's going to be started this month. Acquire a campus for a Pomona church. Um, actually, we're looking at this church right now. We're, we're going to make an offer on it this week, that church right there. How many believe that would be awesome for, we got to get them a campus. They're going, breaking down, setting up. We're going to acquire a campus for our LA, LA church. Um, this year, we want to see 10,000 people go through our discipleship. This year, we want to develop 1,500 leaders that will lead small groups and make disciples. Is there anybody here that wants to be a leader? I'm going to tell you this. I will invest in you, and I'm going to make sure you become the leader that God has called you to be. And when you become the leader that God has called you to be, you're going to fulfill your purpose. It's going to be awesome because you've been called to make a difference in other people's lives. How many believe I'm a leader? Say I'm a leader. We will have our first leadership growth conference here. This year, we're going to have a growth conference where people from all over the world are going to be coming here, and they're going to learn about leadership and growth. We're going to, we want to build a bookstore in our foyer. Come on, it's time to get some good books in your library. You got to see, you're, you are a byproduct of the people you hang around with and the books you read and the meetings you attend. We're going to get some book, good books in your hands besides this one. Um, Build a bookstore, increase to 300,000 in attendance. We're going to finish our junior high in Kenya. We're going to remodel our youth room. Our youth room needs to remodel. We're going to get that done. We're going to create our Holy Warriors, um, with Holy Warriors online for the whole world. Our goal is to, this is what we want to do. We want to disciple a million people. Come on. How many believe we can disciple a million people all over the world right here from the way we're large? Come on. Give the Lord a hand. God's ready to do some mega stuff. We'd love to build a patio out there off our bookstore with a, with, with a courtyard, with an outside baptism. That's, that would be awesome. This is what I would love to do. They're building a, a parking lot across the street. I'm writing this stuff down. It doesn't hurt to write stuff down. Come on, so, someone say dream big. Yeah. They have that parking they're building across the street. That's what we wanted in the first place. Right. But they're building it. 
I would love when they're done building it that somehow we got the money. Hey, say, look, just transfer it to us. We need the parking. I'm writing it down. I'm speaking it. We're building right now a video production studio to create worldwide content. We, we want to have a, a growth leadership podcast. We want to have a 24-hour The Way World Outreach channel that you can turn to and just listen to our content all day long. How many? Come on, we need to start creating some kingdom content. We want to grow to 3,000 weekly givers and, and 10,000 new people getting saved and discipled this year. Give the Lord a hand if you believe in this. Come on, how many believe that God is saying we're going to do this? How many believe you can do it? Come on, you're going to be part of it. It's going to be your friends. It's going to be your family. It's going to be our city. So let's go over the scripture of the year. And I'm, I'm going to go over this, but in a little deeper way. In, a, in, in Isaiah 54, 1, 3, 1 through 3, it says this. The Lord says, who says? So I want you to think about this. What if literally the Lord was speaking to you? Because he is. It's so easy to read these scriptures and just think he was speaking to them. If he was just speaking to them, it wouldn't be written for us. What he's saying is there's a time for everything. And the time to cover this subject as a church and read this portion of scripture is right now. And this is what he said. The Lord says, sing Jerusalem. Jerusalem means God's house or where God dwells. Do you know where God dwells now? In you. The Bible says as a believer, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Where does God dwell? Right here. That's why you as a believer are super powerful and maybe you don't know God, maybe you've been thinking God's in heaven and God says I'm there too, but do you not recognize I'm in you? And if God's in you, that's what the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And I think we're not acknowledging the power that's available to us right in us. Amen? Look at this. Sing Jerusalem. You are like a woman who, had, who never gave birth to children. Start singing and shout for joy. What he's telling, he's telling Jerusalem or God's people, he's saying, look, I want you to start singing. I want you to start, I, I want you to start praising me. I want you to start getting excited because I'm ready to do something in your life that you've never seen. You don't need to see it. Just listen to my word and believe it. Right now, it feels like you've not been productive. It feels like you've been unfruitful. You've been focusing on your failures, but that's going to end right now. That season of failure, that season of addiction, that season of depression, that season of being unfruitful ends right now. And let's switch it right now. If you're hearing my word, receive it and start giving me some praise because your praise creates an atmosphere for me to do what I need to do. Come on. Praise God in your trouble because God is saying I'm going to give you victory right there where you're praising me you never felt the pain of giving birth but you will have more children than the woman who has a husband all he's saying here you're going to grow you're going to come on you're going to bear fruit you're going to be productive in areas you've never been productive in your life. Get ready. And it's going to be because I said it and I'm going to help you do it. Make your tent bigger. Make what? What do you say, baby? It's time to expand. Because what you got right now can't hold what I'm ready to do. You got to expand your thinking. You got to expand your capacity. You got to start thinking right now. It's not time for me to downsize my dreams. It's time to upsize my dreams. It's not the time to downsize my capacity. It's time to increase my capacity. This is my season to prepare for what God is ready to do. Come on, give some praise that's worthy for the breakthrough and the word he's given you. This scripture is basically saying, stop focusing on your past. Because from this day forward, your future is changing because of word I'm giving you. 
Oh, I love it. Come on. Stretch it out. Make it wider, your tent. Do not hold back. Do not what? This is not a year to take it easy. This is a year to like go all out. If you're going to serve God, serve him. Stop holding back. If you're going to be committed, go all the way. Understand your growth will not be in your comfort zone. Your growth will be in your stretch. Some of you last night stayed up late, but you stretched to come here this morning. I know it wasn't easy, especially it was raining out there. I mean, it's raining and a little fireplace or even a good heater will make those, I mean, those covers feel real good. Right? And you start thinking, baby, let's just sleep in. But somehow you got through all those thoughts and you got yourself to the house of God or you tuned in online. And I'm telling you, because you're willing to do that, you're one of the chosen few that God is saying, because you can do that and say no to your flesh, say no to those voices, I'm going to do something big in your life and it's going to start right now. Come on, give God some praise. He's ready to do it. You're in position. But he's also saying, stretch. Stretch. We're going to start a fast Wednesday. This is what I'm going to ask you to do, stretch. I only come on Sundays. Stretch. Be here on Wednesday. It's an appointment. We're going to be unified. We're an army. We're hearing from God. We're going to, we're going to run with this word. We're going to see supernatural growth and increase. And God is saying it's going to start with a fast. How many are ready to do a 21-day fast? I'll show you how to do that Wednesday. But I need you to be here. Someone say stretch. 21-day fast. That young lady started where she was at. You start where you're at. Well, how, how do I fast? I'll show you how Wednesday. We're going to be here. I'm going to show you how to fast. And I guarantee you this. After a fast, your life will never be the same. And your body won't be the same either. Now, if you gain weight in a fast, you ain't fasting right. I don't know what you're doing. It's the air, man. It's my genes. Now, you're feeding your genes somehow. Okay, but, but your life's going to change. When you learn how to say no to the voice that tries to lead you the wrong way. See, what fasting teaches you is how to say yes to God and no to the devil. Because if you could say no to an to in and out burger, you could say no to, to a, a temptation to smoke some weed. Well, well why you mention my weed, foe? I want to take you to a bigger high. Come on. All you're doing, come on. All you're doing is putting a Band-Aid on your depression. But God is saying, I'll deliver you from that depression and I'll fill it with my joy. Come on. It's time to shout for joy. If there's a better high, why wouldn't you want to get it? Amen. If you're here for the first time, don't trip. When we say amen, you know what we're saying? I agree with that. And there's a time in your life that you got to say, I agree with that. Amen. I agree with that. And also you're saying, let that happen in my life. You're saying, open the door. Yes, I want that blessing. Is there anybody here that's saying amen to what God is saying in your life that this year will be a year of supernatural growth? Your family needs to see the change in you before they buy your product. So, man, I'm not, why would I want to go to church? You haven't changed. You're acting more like a witch than you ever had. No. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But they need to see some shifts. 
They need to see some joy. They need to start seeing you studying the word. They need to get some wisdom coming out of your mouth instead of trash coming out of your mouth and nonsense coming out of your mouth and gossip coming out of your mouth because what you put in is what's going to come out. And if you start making up your mind that this year I'm receiving this word, this word is for me as for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Get that word in you. It's going to start coming out of your mouth and it's going to start changing lives all around you. Okay, let's keep on reading. Do not hold back. Do not what? Also, at the end of the month, someone say end of the month. The last week of January, we're going to be after, it's going to be the last week of January, it's the 25th. Someone say 25th. It's a Wednesday night again. So this Wednesday, I want you here. And for sure, the last Wednesday, I want you here. And we're going to have a three-day, three-day impartation services. In these three days, we receive an impartation or we receive what we need for the year. So we're going to have three days in the house of God. That's going to be Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night. Put it on your schedule because God's speaking. Like I'm telling you this, you get the breakthrough when you follow instructions. Don't expect to get the breakthrough and this prophetic word. He says, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step instruction. As you follow it, you will see this word come to pass in your life. Someone say, follow instructions. It said, now, make the ropes longer. Make it stakes longer. What he's saying is, don't, what he's saying is, make it as wide as, and as big as you can. All he's saying is, do all you can to prepare for what I'm ready to do. Say it with me. Do all you can. You know, this is the statement. Prepare to the max. Say it with me. Because your preparation is going to determine the level of growth you're going to experience. God will not give you more than you're prepared to handle. So all I'm saying, this is the beginning of the year, and this is preparation time. This is the beginning of the year, and what do you call this? So if, if, if God is saying, what's, this is going to determine what I'm going to receive, then I want to prepare to the max so I can receive to the max. Does anybody want to receive to the max? Don't expect to receive to the max if you're not willing to prepare for the max. There's a scripture on that I just want to read. And, and this is a point. Lack of preparation leads to lack, not growth. Say it with me. Lack of preparation leads to lack, not growth. Young people, if you're graduating from high school, make, don't make this the dream. I just can't wait till I'm out of school. Okay, then what? Then what? Because see, if you don't get prepared, your then what is you're just, you're just going to live playing video games. And this is the reason you'll do it. And we have a group of young adults that all they do is play video games. And I'll tell you why. Because it's an escape from reality. And I'm not downplaying anybody that's playing video games. You want to play video games? Get really good at it. Make millions of dollars. I don't know why you do that. But, but this is all I'm saying. Is get prepared. As much as you can get prepared. At the levels you can get prepared. So that when, when opportunities come by you, you can participate. Because opportunities pass by people that are prepared. Come on, you guys got this. So this is your time for preparation. Come on, church. This is your time for preparation. Expect big, prepare big. Do the fast. Get the book. Start reading. Show up on impartation services. Do it all. Check, check, check. We have our, our, our Holy Warriors class. If you've not done that, join the Holy Warriors class. Man, you're crazy. People, people start thinking, man, what are you, a holy roller now? Nah, man, I'm just committed. I'm tired of being superficial about this thing. I'm going to give my all. I gave my all to the devil. I gave my all to the drugs. I gave my all to the violence. I gave my all to the craziness. I gave my all to the world. Why wouldn't I give my all to God? I used to party and go on runs for months. You couldn't find me. Everybody thought I was dead. And then I'll just pop up out of nowhere. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm tired of living a mediocre life. And I want to start Start seeing the joy of the Lord, the victory of God, and I know I have a purpose, but it's time for me to start getting prepared for my purpose. Prepare to the max. 
Amen? Amen. I'm going to tell you this. I'll do everything I can to prepare you. That's what writing this book's about. We're not making any money on these books. What we're doing is, is getting the books in your hands. I'm not reading this, getting this book, oh, I'm going to become large and write books. I'm not even thinking about that. I just want to get you to grow, and I want to see you accomplish your purpose. I want to see you succeed. I want, I want to see you have a tool in your hand so you can disciple your family. Come on. Something has to change, and the thing that's going to change, when we get the word of God in our lives, in our families, in our hearts, everything changes. But look at this verse. Lack of preparation leads to lack, not growth. Proverbs 6.6, 6, look what it says. Go to the ant, you slacker. That's what the Bible just said. I didn't say that. Don't get offended with me. Observe its ways and become wise. That's crazy that God's telling us to go to an ant to get some wisdom. Basically saying sometimes ants are smarter than you humans. So let me... Let me give you some wisdom I put in the ants and they don't deviate because they don't have a sinful nature like you. When I set them to do something, they do it and they get the results. But let's go look at the ant, you slacker. <laughs> Observe its ways and become wise. So look at that ant and see what you can learn from it. Without a leader, administrator, or ruler, all they're saying, they don't have no president, they don't have no Congress, <laughs> they're just ants. It prepares, the ant, it prepares its provision in the summer. So this ant, it prepares. Someone said the ant. So there's a season to prepare. So it has provision in the future. And if you prepare, you have provision in the future. Lack of pre preparedness does not produce growth. It produces lack. It prepares its provision in the summer, gathers its food during the harvest, how long will you stay in bed, you slacker? When will you get up from your sleep? This is literally talking to somebody today that you're sleeping way too late. You're saying you have no time and God's saying you got time, but you got to start waking up a little earlier. And start getting prepared. I don't got time to read the word. Wake up earlier. I don't got time to exercise. Wake up earlier. I don't have time to read. Wake up earlier. And God is saying, if you'll wake up early and meet me in the morning, the first part of your day, your whole day will change and your life will begin to change. How many understand? If you start prioritizing, wake up a little earlier and start getting disciplined and stop letting our bodies tell us what to do, and my spirit is going to start telling my body what to do. Do you think I want to wake up at 5 o'clock almost every morning? But we do it, I do it. I don't have nobody telling me I have to be somewhere at five, but, but God's telling me you got to be somewhere at five. Because you're getting so busy, you almost don't have time to read my word and spend time with me so I can talk to you. So God's been telling me, you got to wake up earlier and we'll get this thing done. I go, okay. Is there anybody saying okay to Jesus? Come on, you're saying okay. okay. Right, you guys got that? So lack of pre preparation leads to spiritual lack, financial lack, a lack of wisdom, a lack of strength, a lack of health, a lack of support, a lack of growth, a lack of passion, a lack of, su a, a lack of, a, of success, a lack of peace, a lack of love. The preparation leads us to lack. How many want more love? Come on. You got to spend more time with the Lord. You're not going to get more love just wasting time and all the other content that's coming in you. I'll tell you what, I don't, I don't even watch Facebook or, or that stuff anymore. I'm not telling you you don't have to you do whatever you want to do, but I'm just telling you, I don't do it because it doesn't make me happy. It makes me depressed. And then if, and if someone from the church is doing something really silly, then I want to, like, oh, Lord, he ain't learning nothing. <laughs> and then I just start going, oh, maybe, no, oh, I, no, forget that. What I'm going to do is focus on the word. And when I come here, I don't know what you're doing. So if God's speaking to you, it's not because I look at your Facebook. God's just speaking to you. So prepare to, someone say prepare to the max. And then I'll, I'll just end it with this. Follow the growth instructions. When he told the lady, or, or he told Jerusalem, Israel, um, just make your tents bigger, expand, don't hold nothing back, 
go all out, give it your best, because I'm ready, and what you build, I'll fill. What you build, I will fill. Say it with me. What, you, what we build, he will what? So he's saying, okay, will you give me more space in your life, and whatever you space you give me, I'll fill it with my presence, I'll fill it with my power, I'll fill it with my wisdom, I'll fill it with my joy, I'll fill it with my peace, but I need some space. You're going to have to make some space for me, for space for I could, so I could fill. In the morning, make some space. In your reading, make some space. On your Sunday mornings, make some space. This Wednesday night, make some space. I mean, a Tuesday night Bible study or, or discipleship, holy wars, make some space. And God says, in your family, make some space. He goes, whatever space you give me and make it long and make it big, I will fill it with my power. God is saying, I'm ready to invade whatever space that you give me. Is there anyone here that's ready to give God some time? Come on, put God on your schedule. And God says, the more space you give me, the more blessings you'll have. God is saying, I just don't have any space to expand in your little, little itty bitty tent. God, why aren't you doing more? He goes, how can I with one minute a day when you eat? Lord, thank you for this food. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh. And he's, he's like, oh, fill, fill the 30 seconds. Is there anybody who, come on, willing to expand their tents today? So we're going to do that. And I, I'll tell you this. You know, we're, we're here, and I, I dedicate my life to this. I want to see you know Jesus. Grow spiritually so you can be mature enough to lead others to Christ and help them grow. You know, our, our mission statement for our church is very simple. We make disciples that make disciples. That's it. Our goal is to make you a follower of Jesus Christ and then get you strong enough where you can actually produce another follower of Jesus Christ. And where does it start? It starts with your home. It starts right now. And I've learned this. You'll never be a great leader until you start following instructions. And that's all you got to do. And this is what the scripture says. Study this book of instruction, Joshua 1, 8, continually. So we should study this book what? Continually. All the time, every day. Meditate on it day and night. Meditate on it day and night. So you will be sure to obey everything written in it. So follow the instructions, everything written in it. Expand the territory. Follow the instructions. And only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. What he's saying, if, if you kind of just start picking and choosing what you want to follow, he goes, you won't succeed and prosper in everything you do. But if you follow my instructions and in everything that you do, this is going to happen. Everything you do will prosper. Any area is not working, this is most likely what's happening is you're doing it the wrong way. Marriage, if it's not working, someone's doing it the wrong way. If you're not happy and you're not joyful, there's, there's, there's some wrong thinking there somewhere. Now, we're not judging. What we're doing is diagnosing. You don't, you don't go to the doctor and he says, hey, you know, um, he, he looked at you and he says, oh, we found out what you have. Um, you have this, uh, you have, you have, um, let's say, uh, let's do COVID. You don't say this, don't you judge me. You don't say that. So when God shows you what's right and wrong, he's not judging you. He's correcting you, showing you what's wrong, and he shows you what's right so you can start getting the right results. Come on. It's time to start learning the right results. It's not luck. It's not the lotto. This is serious skill, and we can learn how to do this. But the first step is, is just deciding. I, you know, there was a young man that came up here, and he got baptized last night, and, and he was, he's, he's been a gangster, and and gang banging in Compton for I don't know how long, his whole life. But he gave his life to Jesus recently, and he got baptized last night. And they asked him, you know, why'd you get baptized? He goes, I'm drawing the line. He goes, I'm drawing the line. I'm drawing the line, and I've decided to follow Jesus. And now I'm a soldier in the army of God, and all I do now is say, yes, sir. 
He was a soldier for the devil. He knows, he knows in the hood, if they give you, if they give you an assignment, you got to say, yes, sir, let's handle it. And he's saying, why would I give any less to God? I'm, I, I just made up my mind. I'm going to live for God. Yes, sir. Whatever you say, let's do it. Come on. Is there anybody sold out like that? Say, whatever you say, yes, sir. Let's do it. Okay, now, if you're not there yet, let's break it down really simple. We're done. You know, life is short. The Bible says your life is but a vapor. You're here, you're gone. And there's been billions of people that have lived before us. They came, they got their opportunity, they lived, they breathed, they did what they did, and they're gone. And the big question happens is after you die and you breathe your last breath on earth, what happens then? Well, the Bible makes it clear after death is judgment. There's nobody on this earth that when you die, you go to nowhere. You go to judgment. And judgment means separation. That's all it means, separation. It's a time of separation. And what's the separation? The believers and non-believers. Those that are following Jesus and those that have not placed their faith in Jesus. There's only two groups. The Bible describes this as goats and sheep. The goats are on the left. The sheep are on the right. Jesus is a shepherd, and he shepherds sheep. They hear his voice and have decided to follow him. There are those that hear about Jesus, and they mistake Jesus from religion. Jesus is not a religion. Jesus is a person. He came over 2,000 years ago, and we just celebrated his birth last week. And he died, he lived, and then he suffered and died. But why did he suffer and die? He suffered and died to pay the price for sin, not his sin, our sin. And you know when you sin, you feel guilty. Have you ever sinned and felt like beating yourself up? I've done it. I Actually, I've sinned and punched myself in the face. Like, bam, you dummy. I don't know if anybody's crazy like that, but I'm crazy. I almost knocked myself out so strong. I just get it. No, but, but, I, but I just felt like, I deserve to be punished for that, like that was wrong. And that, that's called guilt and shame. But Jesus loved you so much. He says, I know you sin, and I haven't. But will you let me take all your sin and pay that guilt and that shame and that pain and everything that you should have came to you, will you allow me to pay for it? Because I love you. Because I'm the only one that can pay for it. Because if I don't pay for it, not only will you pay now, but you'll pay for eternity and you'll be eternally separated from me. There's only one way to get saved except the sacrifice of Jesus taking your place. And if you call on him to save you, he'll forgive you, he'll set you free and make you into a brand new person. Brand new person. So that's why I'm going to end it with this. You don't fix your life and come to Jesus. No one's going to get to heaven because they live a great, perfect life. You're going to get to heaven because Jesus saved you. You can't save yourself. I can't save you. Jesus is the only name. He's the only one that died and resurrected from the dead, conquered death for you. He's your only. He, there's no alternative. There's one name to call him. There's one savior. His name is Jesus. And I'm just telling you, if you call on his name today, you could be saved. You could be forgiven. And all these scriptures that we covered today apply to you. He goes, now let's go places. You know, God's going to take you to a better place. Come on. God's going to take you to a better place. Come on. God's going to take you to a better place. Now, I'm going to ask you this question. We're ending with this. I'm going to count to three. You're saying, Pastor, I'm not sure. I'm going to ask you this question. If you were to die right now, are you sure where you'd go? Are you going to heaven or are you going to go to hell forever? You say, Pastor, I don't know. Well, don't leave here I don't know. Make your decision today. You're not going to get into heaven accidentally. You're going to, make it, you're going to get to heaven because you gave your life to Jesus. One. You say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be forgiven of my sins. Today's my day. I'm not sure I'm right with God. Or it's early in the year. I'm a Christian, but I backslid. It's time for me to come back home. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hands. One, two, three. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to recommit my life to the Lord. I see those hands right over there. I see that hand over there. Can Those that raise their hand, can you do one my favor and just stand up right where you're at? Just stand up right where you're at. Just stand up real quick. I'm not going to... We just, I just want to acknowledge you. Let's give him a hand. Come on. Let's give him a hand. Come on. They're making a decision. I'll tell you. It's the greatest decision you ever make. Everyone stand up with them. 
Those that st stood up right now, will you do me one more big favor and give me the honor and privilege of praying with you? I love to pray with you. I want you to come forward right, right up here. We're not going to embarrass you. We're just going to pray with you. But this is a sign that you're serious about following Jesus, that you're leaving your old life behind and you're stepping forward. Come on. Let's give them a hand as they're coming forward. Someone's giving their life to Jesus. Someone's making up their mind. This is going to change your life just like it changed that young lady's life a year ago. Come on, let's go. Awesome. Awesome. Come on, let's give him a hand. Let's give him a hand. Come on. What a great decision. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Love you. So proud of you. Love you. Beautiful. God bless you. That's the way to start. That's the way to start. It takes a real man to do this. God bless you, honey. New, the new day, okay? It's going to start right now. A new beginning. The word that God gave is for you too, okay? God loves you. There it goes. That's the presence of God touching her right now, healing her, and setting her free. All depression goes now in the name of Jesus. Joy, peace is coming to her right now. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes, baby. There it goes. There's the pains going right now. The pain in your heart is leaving you right now. There it goes. Come on, that's the power of the Lord. Only God could do this. Come on, church. That's the presence of God. Thank you, baby. That's it. That's it. There's no, there's no sin that's a match to Jesus. Okay, let's, let's, let's be free. Proud of you, baby. What's your name? Susan. A new day. Okay, start it right now. Okay, God loves you. He's not judging you. He's forgiving you. And you're going to forgive yourself today, okay? We all made mistakes. Who cares? Okay, and you're going to follow Jesus. And we're going to be your family. You're not going to be alone. Okay, get ready. Love you, mama. God bless you. What's your name? Dana. God bless you, Dana. Let's pray. Let's pray. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, your personal Lord, you believe that he rose from the dead, you'll be saved right now. You'll be set free right now. Your names will be written in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. You'll, be, you'll receive the eternal life right now. Let's pray. Say, Jesus, I ask you now to forgive me of all my sins. I believe that you died on the cross. You suffered. And then you rose from the dead to pay the price for all my sin. Forgive me now. Set me free. Make me new. I open my heart. I ask you, Jesus, come in and fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Make me a new person. I'm saved. I have eternal life. I'm born again. And from this day forward, I'll follow you, Jesus, for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. If you gave your life to Jesus, your next step, just fill out a card. We're going to make sure we sign you up for our next classes. Baptism. God bless you guys. Wednesday night. Come on. I get a little rest this weekend. This weekend, I get ready for Wednesday night. We are going to start this off like an army, worshiping God and fasting together. Love you guys. If you've never fasted, it'll change your life. Jesus started his life, his ministry with a fast. Let's start off this year with a fast as well. God bless you guys. I'll be right up here for a few minutes. If you want to meet me, I'll be up here on the other side here. Uh, God bless you. We love you.